The sharpest of conversation now on four as Clive Anderson talks back. Take out the papers and the trash. Or you don't get no spending cash. If you don't scrub back to the floor, you ain't gonna rock and roll no more. Yaggity yak. Don't talk back. Don't you? It could be a bad show tonight. Hello and welcome to Clive Anderson Talks Back in the week of the Conservative Party conference. And John Major made an impassioned speech about who he was and what his intentions were. Eventually the doorman recognised him and let him in. <laughs> he, actually in the hall, Michael Portillo promised that Britain will always have its own independent foreign policy. So long as that's all right with the Americans. <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Thatcher's 70th birthday saw crates of wine, gin and whiskey wheeled into her house. She and Dennis were having a quiet night in. <laughs> Former Prime Minister Sir Alec Douglas Hume died this week, reducing the Conservative majority in the House of Lords to a dangerous 1,093. <laughs> Liz, uh, Liz Taylor has had, to, has had an operation to correct her lopsided walk. She's had her cocktail cabinet removed. <laughs> and and people, people, seeking, people seeking compensation after suffering the effects of LSD have been granted legal aid. Unfortunately, it was granted by a 20-foot luminous pink rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> and an armed, uh, an armed robber serving 17 years in Parkhurst is having a sex change operation. It cost more than £2,000, but his cellmates did club together to pay for it. <laughs> and... Uh, oh, work it out. And finally... Yes, it is there, you see. Uh, and finally... And finally, mourners paid tribute to leading astrologer Patrick Walker following his death this week. Uh, colleagues said it was a sad day for astrology, but a good day for getting out and meeting new friends and going on a journey. There <laughs> we go. Now, right. Okay. Now. Oh yeah. Right. Now, uh, the at the Conservative Party conference, Social Services Minister Peter Lilly introduced the new benefit card. Uh, it's really just a sort of smart card. This is a, a guaranteed, foolproof way to cut down on fraud. I've managed to get one. That I've managed to get uh, twelve. Uh, 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 <laughs> now, let's do some... <laughs> it's satirical, really, isn't it? Now, um, photo news now. Uh, in fact, uh, trial news in pictures and sharp-eyed police fear that the streets of Gloucester may yield yet more bodies. <laughs> now, my, my first guest tonight is a writer who unusually is made more famous by the people who dislike his writing than by the ones that do. Please welcome Booker and pretty well every other prize-winning author, Salman Rushdie. Come on, come on. So, oh, Salman, do take a seat. Now, all right, well, uh, well, well, I suppose you're fed up talking about it, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, the fact of the matter is you are in this quite extraordinary situation of a death threat uh, still, still hanging over your head. Mm -hmm. I mean, does it get any better? Do you get uh, more rested about it or peaceful about it? No, I think I just, I just try and, I'm trying to get rid of it, you know, yeah. and, and, uh, and uh, well, we're getting there. You know, yeah. if you're not there, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know when, yeah. but not not quite yet. Well, I mean, your problem is that even if you get, uh, well, obviously you can't get Ayatollah Khomeini to withdraw mm. the threat, but uh, or the uh, the the the, uh, the fatwa. Mm. But uh, even if the authorities in Iran were to do that, you you still can't know that everybody the message can get through to everybody. And so no, well, that's true. But I, I think you know a lot of people in public life have that problem, Clive. You yes, know, possibly even I mean, let far be it for me to say so, but yeah. you. Well, <laughs> Who, who's getting at me then, for goodness sake? Well, just yeah. mind your back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to try that on you, but I thought it would be a bit unfair, so... <laughs> no, no, I mean, uh, as a sort of concept, as a sort of thing, oh, there's a fatwa against Salman Rushdie, mm. people can comment on it, make jokes about it, find mm. it uh, sort of amusing, but actually when you concentrate and think about it, which you have to do every day, mm. it's, a, it's a completely destructive thing, isn't it? I mean, what do you, what do, you do on a day-to-day -day basis? You're, you're at home somewhere with... Um, uh, with guards looking after you the whole yeah. time? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's getting, that side of it's getting better. Mm. I mean, I am kind of getting out more, you know, and yeah. I, think, I think actually there's an important point there because it's important to show that this kind of threat doesn't work. You know, yeah. if I kind of disappeared for the rest of my life, it would actually show that this kind of uh, bully boy tactics were effective, you know, yeah. so I think the best thing I can do is to go on TV programs a lot and 
yes. know, things like that. Have, I mean, obviously, it's a, a dreadful thing, but have you been um, sort of interested to see the reaction that, that has flowed from the fact that there's been this uh, death threat? I mean, you had a strange reaction from lots of people writing and commenting uh, when it occurred. I think, you know, th the fact is that most people were incredibly supportive, you know, and yeah. I, th I think truthfully, I mean, to be serious for a minute, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that kind of support. You know? yeah. And I'm really appreciative of that. Yeah. There were, of course, the usual few people who decided yeah. to be on the other side. I mean, you know, Jermaine Greer makes a habit of being on the other side of yeah. almost any issue. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but over there with her would be like Norman Tebbit, sort of saying, you know, yeah. you're, you're a villain and uh, basically okay. you should, you know, shut well, up or leave but, the country. No, no, but I think if there's a room with Jermaine Greer and Norman Tebbit in it, I'm quite happy to be in another one. <laughs> 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 well, it's a, it's a sort of stra it's a strange thing. You had something like uh, Richard Littlejohn saying, uh, you know, I couldn't care less if the Iranians top Salman Rushdie as long as it doesn't happen here. I mean, do you get sort of crossed by that and think, this is ridiculous, this man is saying, yes, I should be murdered? Yeah, so I mean, actually, I have the same high opinion of him. I must say. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you had your time again, I mean, not knowing what you know mm. now, would you still have written the Satanic Verses? Or I mean, I think, you know, I think probably yes. You know? yeah. And I think, actually, as a novel, I have no problem with it, you know, mm. and I think... Uh, most of the people who did have a problem with it, after all, hadn't read it. Yes. Well, it's uh, quite difficult to read, so... Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, well no, I know what you mean. They hadn't, they hadn't uh, read it and they knew... Well, the new one's easier. Yes, it is. Yes, it <laughs> is. Uh, yeah. You got onto that, then. You yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't lost yeah. your promoting skills. The no, Moore's no, last no. sign. It's a, yeah. It is. It's a rattling good read. It's not a, yeah. it's not a Jeffrey Archer, let's say. No, but, I uh, hope not. <laughs> I hope not. But you know, yeah. One of the things I've discovered is you've got to make books funnier these days. But you've all... always put lots of jokes in your... your yeah, books. I mean, I think one of the things not often said about the Satanic Verses is that it is in part a, com a comic novel. Yes. You know? uh, not, I mean, some people seem to miss the joke, but that's... <laughs> 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 the Ayatollah didn't have a bit of a chuckle over did he? I mean, uh, yeah. But I feel he didn't have yeah. a chuckle over yeah. much, really. Yeah. You know, I don't yeah. think he was a big chuckler, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, careful, don't cause trouble. <laughs> now, the... Uh, <laughs> No, it's, it's actually very good to have you on because, you know, we've been trying to get you for ages. I mean, where have you been hiding? But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, the, um, but the, the, the latest book you do, I mean, it, it has, it's uh, set in Bombay, largely, mm. uh, and there's, uh, there are people in Bombay who are offended by it. I don't think you well, can get it in that, this, this new book. No, no, that's only one politician. I mean, yeah. it's, it so happens that there's one quite powerful politician in Bombay. Yeah. Uh, a, a gentleman who you, who you will gain a sense of when I say that he keeps a picture of Hitler on his desk. And, yes. You know, if, there's a, if there's a crypto fascist politician who thinks that, I've, that I don't like him, yeah. he's probably right. Yeah. <laughs> but you could, like, you know, do a writer sort of more like a Joanna Trollope next time. Yeah. And just deal with, you know, yeah. something more. Well, well, you could pick on the Church of England because if you say the whole tenants of the Church of England are wrong yes. and misconceived, they'd, you know, they'd come around and Thora Heard would come and beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's true. Or you'd be made a bishop yeah. or something. But, uh, <laughs> I actually did have tea with the Archbishop of Canterbury, I can reveal. Yes. And, um, this was after he'd been quite rude about me and decided the way to make up for me was to invite me around to tea. Um, so I went, but I, I, I say it was very disappointing. There was, there was a dog sleeping in front of the fire that was very reassuring. Yes. But there were no cucumber sandwiches. All right. <laughs> so now, you, I know you said that you don't really want to put into fiction form your own uh, life. Mm. Uh, not directly, but I would have thought it's a perfect plot, really, for... A, well, for the trouble a, is, you know, you couldn't make it up. What's interesting about it is that it's true, you know? Yes. And, and I think the book that I would like to write about it, which I, which I would, yeah. uh, is a non-fiction book. It's simply, yeah. you know, when I don't have to keep all these secrets, yeah. I'd like to tell them. Yeah. You know, well, people, I'm sure people would like to know, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? If you want to buy a newspaper, you can't mm. just sort of pop down to your local shop, can you? Oh, well, you see, you must assume that because I don't tell you I'm popping down yeah. to the shop that I'm not doing it. Yes. Uh, I mean, there was certainly a time which was which was kind of awful when I had to get other people to do everything for me. I mean, if I needed a new shirt, I'd have to yeah. ask a friend of mine to buy it. They'd yeah. come back with these dreadful things. Yeah, oh, I can see. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, but, you know, but it's a bit better now. It's I mean. better now, yeah. But have you yeah, ever This is my own fault. <laughs> <laughs> but to, to get back to the serious matter, what, what is... Um, uh, you know, what is the amount on your head now? I, I don't I mean your hair. No, it's, it's very uh, difficult. About <laughs> 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 the same as mine, I think. Of the, yeah. 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 No, I, I think I can't remember. They keep yeah. they keep saying that they're putting it up by what they call an undisclosed amount. Yes. No, I mean well, that's no good to uh, <laughs> you know somebody. No, it's difficult having yeah. a lot of friends who are yeah. writers, you know, because most of them are broke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I, could, I was imagined a way that you could sort of do it. We, you, you know. 
whatever the amount, say it's $5 million. Let's say so. And we do an agreement, mm. on, on, not as in now, but on this show, yes. I pretend to kill you. Yes. I get the $5 million. Yes. You have half of it to go and get a new identity. And then we say surprise. Yeah, and I... <laughs> <laughs> and I have the other half to hire O.J. Simpson's defence team to show <laughs> that I didn't do it anyway. So that... that and now, everybody's happy. <laughs> But I mean, you even had like British Airways won't won't fly you. Is that does that still apply? That still applies. I'm, unfortunately, they're in. You know, they're getting to be in rather a minority. So I hope we can embarrass them into changing their mind. I suppose I mean, if you're a nervous flyer, flyer, though, you're nervous flyer, and you sit down. Oh, as Mr. Mm. Rushdie next to you. I yeah. suppose it might be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, of course, yeah. what you should do is yeah. feel much safer. Yes. You know. Well, all I can say is that w I've been on quite a lot of planes. You know, in the, in the last few years. Yes. And, and, and every time I've been on them, the other people on the plane are extremely pleased that I'm there. You know, yeah. they get me to sign their, their in-flight dinner menus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, do you have people at book signings coming up and discussing you know, Moore's Last Sigh? And, you know, do you yeah. What you yeah, know? we've done yeah. quite a few around the country. Yeah. I, mean, I, did one, I did one today. Yeah. Um, and, and people, are, you know, people seem to be very pleased that I'm able to do it. Yeah. And, and I'm very pleased that I'm able to meet them. Yeah. So it's been a real kick. Because part, part of the problem is that people are very uh, sceptical and cynical, and when something like this happens, they say, oh, it's just been done for the publicity. It's just deliberately done. I mean, I, the, I was in America when the Hugh Grant story of being mm. a prostitute, the, the first two people that spoke to me about it, they first oh, of course, it's all just done to publicise his film. So there, there's a kind of that sort of thing, oh, maybe, maybe it was all done just to, yes, to, we, to sell we, books. Well, we hired this public relations yeah. company in Iran, you mean. <laughs> 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 well, I was just, I was just next time, I'd, I'd go for the prostitute yeah. rather than the... Uh, <laughs> no, just, yeah. just no, as uh, we we got, we've got rid of them. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you first started writing, you were, you were an advertising copywriter. That's right. I mean, you are the dream for, because all advertising copywriters are supposed to have a novel in their... They do. In fact, yes, it's true. When I, when I won the Booker, the first telegram I received was from my bank manager. Mm. Uh, it was very, he was very pleased. And the, the, yeah. and the second... It wasn't a death threat, was it? No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, no. It was, it was for, the, for the first time, it yeah. wasn't. <laughs> and the second one was from the people I'd used to work with in the agency. And, yes. I, and I think they did have that feeling of somebody finally yeah. busting out. Yeah. So what were the slogans you did? You, you were, well, I, 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 I am, I'm afraid, responsible for naughty but nice. Naughty but nice. Know, was, <laughs> or, or in Iran, uh, it's just naughty, isn't yes, it? Exactly. Yeah. Yes, I tend yeah. to stress the but yeah. nice yeah. these days. Go to work in a tank? Was that one of yours? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thank you for joining us, uh, Simon Rushdie. Okay, jolly good. Thank you, Simon. Okay. Okay. Now, news, uh, some touch on news. Yeah, new, uh, news in pictures now. And at a private party in honour of Mrs Thatcher's birthday, number 10 staff remembered the tragic moment when she was forced to resign as Prime Minister. <laughs> Now, of course, uh, pet lovers will be feeling sorry for the couple who tried to smuggle a dog into Britain via the Channel Tunnel. Uh, the dog was put into quarantine because of our strict rabies laws, uh, but we have a little surprise for that couple who were trying to smuggle in that way. We've had a whip round. We bought them a dog to remind them of events. There it is. That's the dog for you, then. OK. <laughs> there you go. Now, then, uh, my, uh, my next guest was a rock legend before Kylie Minogue had a singing lesson, uh, whenever that can have been. Uh, please welcome a golden singer with a golden voice, Dusty Springfield. <laughs> oh, Dusty, you're very good. Thank you. Oh, oh. Thank you. <laughs> this is... Oh. Ah. Uh, uh -huh. I've got some, yeah, that's a proper sort of showbiz greeting. I didn't it know is, how to get yes, that from my I was guess. in LA too long. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, uh, you were right there at the beginning of when, when rock was invented. You were there when rock was oh young. Oh, Christ! <laughs> <laughs> that's a good start, Claire. Well, you, well, you, well, you were, weren't you, in the, in the sort of 60s? You were the first uh, performer on Top of the Pops. Was I? What? Am I making this up? Or is, it, <laughs> is it too long to remember? You, you it's were, too long to It was yeah, you I, and I, Jimmy I'm Savile when he was 55 I, or something. I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was told that, that that's so, yeah, but I yeah. actually don't Well, you were there at the time, well, weren't you? Uh, so they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> You're here now, aren't you? Uh, so they tell yes. me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, now, you were always hailed as, uh, as, a, as a great singer, fantastic voice. You're, you know, white woman with the black eye makeup. Yeah. But the, <laughs> <laughs> it's less, it's yeah. less, it's less. Yeah. But how did you get all that sort of emotion and the, and the, the flavour the, into the voice? Because most great singers I've seen come from, you know, Louisiana and they... they I have no idea. It is rather odd for a small Irish child. My, yeah. my brother was, uh, 
was very talented. And Is that I, Buffalo Springfield? <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do when you grow up? <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you say you're Irish. You actually come from Hampstead, don't you? Yeah, but London <laughs> Irish. And you, I, being you, Irish is a state of mind. Well, you're a rugby player as well. <laughs> 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 Don't let on. Yeah. But well, you've sold more records than all of the Nolans put together. I mean, you're... you're, you're <laughs> <laughs> but how did you but get that sort of earthy Clannard. feeling? Not you got, you got the, the Hampstead Blues, you know, woke up one morning and the delic delicatessen was closed. Uh, it's, it's not... <laughs> it's not <laughs> Even worse, it was actually High Wickham. High Wickham? Yeah. Oh, so you have seen life. High Wickham. Yeah, yeah, high Wickham. <laughs> Sort of highs and lows and like that. But you weren't Chris and Springfield, you were just in a group called the Springfields. Uh, and you... Mary Isabel Catherine Bernadette O'Brien. Yeah, Nolan. <laughs> Nolan. Yeah. It's a Polish name. So Springfield, it. so it's a good job you didn't join the Trogs or something, because you'd be, <laughs> you'd be Dusty Trogs. <laughs> yeah, it could be worse. Dusty Pacemaker. Could... <laughs> it could See be worse. See the hospital. Yeah, we... <laughs> <laughs> so away you went, and then you got, uh, you know, all the uh, great songs. What, what are those songs? I, 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 only want to be with you. Yeah, that was the first one. I can one. still remember that. Yeah, boy, I wish I could. It's crazy, but it's true. Right I only want to be with you. How about yeah, it? Well, well, how about well, you? This is ridiculous. How about it? You, you, you sing it. I mean, you're the, you're the, you're the. Voice. I can never sing that when it's too high for me. Oh, is it? Yes. So what do they do? They, they, they turn it down? No, no. I was younger then. Yes. <laughs> Oh damn! <laughs> well, I tell you, what about Son of a Preacher Man? Now was that was that about David, you do it? Was that about David Frost? Because he was a <laughs> no, 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 he, I, he was a Son of a Preacher I Man. No, did, yes I, he was. He I was. Really Ooh. Oh, he yes he was. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes he was. <laughs> yeah. Only in retrospect. Yeah. Now I remember those when the shows didn't have just have Rolling Stones plus support, or well, that's what they were now. But you know, Rolling Stones on their own, you had like nineteen yeah. great acts. So I know, you have Dusty great. Springfield, Roy Orbison, Rolling Stones, Beatles. It, it was amazing. I mean, they jammed as ma as many on as they could, and I was always the the, the only girl. Yeah. And so was that uh, fun? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yes, it was. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. You're gonna get me to sing, surely. Yeah. yeah, go on. I, I just don't know what to do with myself. That's it. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. <You did> it. <laughs> Finally. Have <laughs> you got a new record out? I suppose I ought to mention. Uh, it's uh, Dusty Springfield, a very fine love, and it's a uh, it's a very very fine voice still on that. But uh, what it's I was perfect. trying, I'm just mentioning it along the way, but I was about to mention you were sort of. You, you, did you punch out Buddy Rich, was it? Or oh, I did, yes. Yeah. I mean, that... Oh, <laughs> well, great, I a lot did. of people... Two no, people I happen to hate Buddy Rich, I, I, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't actually, I just... Uh, he was just so incredibly arrogant, and it's a long story, but yeah. all I did was give him a good old 20th Century Fox chorus girl slap, but I missed, and got his toupee. <laughs> <laughs> And he never forgave me. Well, I can see, I can see why not. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you've got sort of, uh, I say you've got lots of hit records behind you, but do you, do, can you, is it possible to live off those? I mean, how many, oh, do you live off ones, the royalties? Oh, the old ones, absolutely. Oh, yeah. oh it, yes. It's, they're the best. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. I've done my work, you know, like 25 years ago. Yes. And then they keep bringing them out, you know. Yeah. It's just wonderful because I get to go, hello. Yeah. I, mean, I, just, I, <laughs> I just got my first <laughs> platinum disc. Right. For, um... Uh, pulp Fiction, which right. uh, they used as Son of a Preacher Man in Pulp Fiction, yeah. which I still haven't seen. But there, this, this thing arrived. You haven't, you haven't there, seen no, I haven't. Pulp Fiction. I'm waiting until it comes out on video. Yeah. I never go to the cinema. Yeah. But this thing arrived at my door, and I thought it was something I'd ordered from a catalogue, because I'm always, you know, I'm a catalogue mate, yeah. and I can't stop yeah. ordering things from catalogues. Well, you order platinum discs from no, the catalogue. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I order platinum blondes from my catalogue. Uh, <laughs> Do you? <laughs> And you've arrived. Now, what's the... Uh... <laughs> anyway, so you thought it was a catalogue. No, I just, it just, but it was too thin, you know. I'm, yeah. I'm usually ordering sort of terrible gadgets that I, I really think are a good idea, like for putting hooks up on kitchen's wall, like yeah. called Does It. I mean, I never find anyone to put it up for me, so they all yeah. land under the stairs. Yeah. Anyway, it was very thin. I didn't know what it was, and uh, yeah. it was delightful to get it. But when, you were, when we were doing that in those days, were you part of that sort of, you know, male rock stars trash hotel rooms? And, and did, you, did you do all that? You were oh, wild, drinking, no, dr no. drugs, all that kind of stuff? No, back in the 60s, I didn't do any of this stuff. It was the 70s that I yeah. kind of got out of control. <laughs> well, you in also... In the 60s, I sort of remember. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> the 70s, yeah. forget it. Yeah. <laughs> well, they say if you can remember the 70s, you don't want to. But uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you very much I for joining us. I think I did the right thing. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Dusty Springfield. Yeah. Okay. All right. Jolly good. Thanks a lot. Uh, we'll take a break. See you after that. Bye. Okay. Don't tell that. Have an unlucky break and your Rover dealer will give you an instant quote. And you'll be the first to know if anything else needs attention. Take action for healthy looking, shiny, gorgeous hair. Take action. Get new Triple Action Flex to strengthen, moisturize and protect your hair. Take action. If you're not sure where to turn for savings or a pension, it may be reassuring to know we've been finding our way successfully through the financial markets. Well, Dolly D. Now, welcome back. Now, um, well, everyone, of course, was shocked this week by the decision to send Everton football star Duncan Ferguson to prison. Uh, Shocker wasn't an Arsenal player, but the good news <laughs> is that, uh, as usually is, Sabuti have already rushed out a new Duncan Ferguson model for their set. There you go, you get Duncan Ferguson in that. Um, <laughs> rather sad, really, but inside, you've, uh, there you are, you've got him, and he's uh, unfortunately he slowed down a bit because he's chained to a prison warder. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, the great thing is, I can add it to my collection of jailed footballers, because uh, most weeks the prison system can put out a better team than Terry Venables, but, uh, <laughs> but then who can't? There you go, you've got. Uh, Tony Adams on the right wing, as Mickey Thomas on the E wing, and uh, anyway, it's virtually complete, uh, apart from a goalkeeper. But um, you know, you never know about that. Now, the, some, uh, <laughs> let's do some news and pictures now. And uh, you probably know it's National Wonder Bra Week, and uh, here's a photo of what experts claim are the biggest pair of tits in Britain. <laughs> now, <laughs> Just a joke. Anyway, my last guest, my last guest has visited this show a couple of times before, and as a direct result, he is now one of the country's most popular screen performers. Please welcome a right little cracker, Robbie Coltrane. <laughs> oh, Robbie. Uh, <laughs> good week. Yeah, Robbie. Oh, yeah. Good good to you. You. <laughs> Great. Sit down. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> Oh stop. oh, stop it! <laughs> you're milking the crowd! <laughs> you're, you're not a comedian, you're a proper actor now. I'm a you're proper actor, yeah. I have to behave. Yeah. Yes. I just wanted to say, actually, before we start, that there are rumours going around that I've been interfering with Trevor McDonald's bongs. And it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but there was, it was the news at 10 was going to be put back for a quarter of an hour. But well, I've, I've, I've seen the first hour, which is 75 minutes, that being television logic, and uh, yeah. I, I can't think of any bit I would, I would care to cut. So what they're doing is they're going to put the... The last hour of the last series is going out on Monday. Yes. The following Sunday, they're putting out the 75-minute yeah. version of the first hour. Yes. With me yeah. so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the Monday, they're going to show the second hour, yes. which is a real hour rather than the 75 right. minutes. But the first one is now going out opposite Pride and Prejudice, which is a bit of a bad scheduling thing, isn't it? Well, but yeah, but last, last year they put it out opposite, uh, opposite uh, Chisel Chops, didn't they? They put it out opposite... Yeah. The, yeah. And, and was that a Dickens? <laughs> a Dickens. It was, <laughs> Chisel Chops. It, it was a Dickens of a show to watch. And, uh, but I think, it's, I think it's... Well, you don't, you, you'd wonder what they think. They think, well, we've got a really great show. It's cost us millions of pounds. Let's put it out opposite a show that regularly gets 15 and a half million. That yeah. leaves us with four people watching <laughs> our show. You know, you think... Something wrong here. Well, I think it's worried the, the Pride and Prejudice people, because I think they're, instead of ending on a sort of happy, I don't want to spoil yeah. the ending of Pride and Prejudice, yeah, yeah, you know, with yeah. uh, Darcy or Knightley, who yeah, is uh, getting yeah. married to Elizabeth, they don't have that uh -huh. anymore. He, he's going to brutally kill her. Kill and, then, <laughs> and a Scots detective is going to come on and say, oh, I know who it must have been, yeah, because they're dead yeah. scared. You know. Frighten, they're yeah. frightened men, they're on the run. Yeah. But uh, people will tape it, people will tape one yes. shot, one shot or yeah. the other. Well, I've watched probably. it already, because that's the perk of this job I get to see. Right, right. And I'm on the edge of my seat. It's a, it's a frightening show, isn't it? Uh, it is. But I can see why you wouldn't want to have that sort of rapes and deaths in the middle of when News at Ten's normally on. No, normally exactly. It's, it's, it's so rapes quiet. And deaths. It's <laughs> rapes and deaths, is exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well. But, but as I say, is that a sort of publicity? <laughs> <laughs> 
Stop it! You're not a <laughs> you're not a comedian anymore. No, it's ages yeah, since yeah. I played. I played a yeah. house. It's lovely. Yeah. You can, yeah. you can smell. Yeah. Them. <laughs> I'll, maybe, I'll maybe strip later just to get yeah. that feeling back. <laughs> Oh, we've seen all that. You've been in the paper. You've been subjected to sort of oh, uh, prying yes, cameras. Oh, yes, that was one. Yes, they, they f went fifteen hundred miles to take a picture that shows categorically that I'm a fat bastard with my underpants. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise yeah. that must have been to you all. Yeah. I bet you're glad you bought yeah. the people last Sunday. Yeah. Hey, Maureen, look at that. Robbie Coltrane's a fat bastard with underpants. <laughs> I shall certainly buy it next week. Yeah. But this. Have you ever had a what, fat wire on I, you? What, what you do ever? you want? Um, I've had a fat everything in me, yeah. mate. <laughs> <laughs> But a fat uh, what? Have you ever... a fat, I, uh, yeah. Well, but... ever since I left Take That, there's been a, a lot of threats <laughs> from, from uh... <laughs> A lot of threats from teenage girls, you know. Yeah, I can see. Get back up there in that see-through T-shirt, Rob. You're breaking our heart. <laughs> but, uh, and the underpants. The postman said he thought it was redirected wrongly or something. <laughs> But I, I, there's some talk about a film of it being made, or yeah. a, any more series of crack, all that kind we're of thing? Gonna, well, we're not doing another series, but we're going we're to do the occasional special. Oh, Christmas crack. Christmas yeah. crack, yeah. I knew that one. <laughs> <laughs> here's one, here's one. Here's one, here's one. Here's one, here's one. Here's one, here's one. Here's one. And what about, yeah. and you're going to go to Hong Kong and do it? I am going to go to Hong Kong and do it. And then, a and Chinese then, cracker, then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. More like a prawn cracker. <laughs> now, hey, now. That's ball, surely. More like cracker jack. <laughs> Um, yeah, we are. We're going yeah. to, going to Hong, Hong Kong to do one, I think. Yeah. And, uh, well, that's and handy, anywhere that's exotic and nice. Well, well you've missed out on the, some of the big films over here because there have been a lot of Scottish films made. A lot of Scottish films. Yeah. And um, you missed out. You weren't William well, Wallace, no, it you was, weren't Rob Roy. It was very funny because um, <laughs> I'm just rising above that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, did, and the new because, series of Dr. Uh, Finley, you could have been that. <laughs> I, no, no, it was very <laughs> ironic because I was, of course, working living in Manchester all summer and going up to. Scotland are home the occasional weekend, and I'd see all these Lee Electric tracks from from yeah. from uh, yeah. you know from here going up the Glen. And I'm thinking, what are they doing? Of course, there's huge lighting rigs yeah. and uh, yeah. makeup vans going up the road, and I'm going the other way to go and film in Manchester. But there's like, every actor in Scotland was that. Terribly ironic and interesting <laughs> at the time, but <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously still working it's out obviously what, a showbiz yeah, thing. Yeah. They already. It's still working out what Lee Electric could be, <laughs> but uh, it sounds like a French. Uh, you know, oh, company. Lee, well, Lee Electric yeah. is a company in Wembley who who yeah. supply the lights for films. Yeah. So now it's hilarious, right? <laughs> <laughs> and other films, you, uh, you got down to doing a, a James... Hey. You're the new James Bond or something? I am the new Bond girl, yeah. actually. It's all yeah. gone... <laughs> <laughs> it's all gone, all gone horribly wrong. Yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm one of the villains in the Bond movie. I play yeah. a Russian, a oh, Russian uh, arms dealer. And uh, uh, it's a nice character. Yeah. I get to throw machine guns around and say, what would you give me for this and what would you give me for that? And, <laughs> Play around with a lot of expensive machinery. So what, what, enormous a Russian fun. gun, whether that be a sawn-off shotgun. A sawn-off, a sawn-off. It's very good. It's good. There's, there's loads of that. Yeah. Sawn-off. Sawn it's um, not mumbling. Well, I'm Smirnoff. talking. Smirnoff. Smirnoff. Oh, it's me yeah, smoking yeah. your show. Oh well, I won't come back then. <laughs> you're on every week. We have. You're Get your auntie on yeah. and see who watches. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> you. Uh, hey. Boy, hey, hey, wait hey, a minute. Hey. hey. What's wrong with my auntie? Yeah, exactly. Get your coat off. So anyway, you're the villain in that. So do you do, you do it yes. in Russian or do you just well, do a sort of Russian? I, I speak enough? perfect Russian, but they said, Robbie, please, the British won't understand <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. And I'd been studying Russian for four years just in case I got asked, yeah. you know, the way you do it. <laughs> so, uh, no, I did the, one of those back of your throat accents that the yeah. Russian, Russian people actually do speak like that. <laughs> uh, not the women, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the women. No, that's good, that's a good... That voice is just slightly deeper. No, thank yeah. you. Not yeah. so, good. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, so yeah. It, was, it was great fun. Well, that's it a very good Russian, but do you have to sort of get all that menace? Because, I mean, let's face it, you're not going to win in the end, are you, against James Bond? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just played it very, very quiet and enigmatic. Yeah. Oh, James Bond, I notice you're carrying a gun that I believe only three men in the world carry, and I have killed two of them. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's the lines yeah. I, you always wanted to do yeah, when, you, so when you saw yeah. a Bond movie. Yeah. I never wanted to be James Bond, I always wanted to be the bad yeah. guy who sat there with a the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Come in, Mr. Bond, ignore the sharks, they've been fed today, or have they? <laughs> you know, all that. Yeah, so I, well, no, I wish. You know. So has that been filmed? Has that actually done that? It's all in the can, as we say. Yeah. Oh, um, back to Lee Electric, aren't we? In the um, <coughs> can. Yeah. Um, so in ordinary, that we in the toilet. That would be. In the, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or in the John. Yeah. In America. <laughs> so what about Hollywood? You, have you been uh, been nabbed by Hollywood to go? I I have been nabbed by the Hollywoods. It's yeah. not nice. Yeah. <laughs> but um, there is a cream now. Yeah. The uh, no, I I I've been asked to. I have been asked to go over. 
yeah. um, for, for various things. I'm just waiting till, till the right thing comes along, yeah. really. But uh, do they, are they happy with the, S the Scots accent? Are you, are you allowed to play it just in your they, own room? Well, my, my Scottish accent is, is quite American. I mean, that's where the American accent came from, Irish, Scots, yes. bit of German, bit of bish bush. Yeah. So, uh, bit of Pocahontas, obviously. Bit of Pocahontas. Yeah, yeah. There's a cream for that now, too, I right hear. <laughs> <laughs> What's Pocahontas? I've seen in a man. No. Um, I've not seen that yet. Is it good? Uh, no, I haven't seen it either. No, but, just uh, checking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's the, Engl the English are to blame. It's always the English to blame. Yeah, I think it probably was, though, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I, I'm, I met a, a Native American once who said that the Scots and the Native Americans got on fine until the, the red tunics turned up. Right. Because the jocks went over and just went, uh, main of us shoot a few deer and, uh, and I said, oh, on you go, on you go, jockey. <laughs> on you go, jockey. <laughs> Already and, uh, speaking English, but it was the, accent, <laughs> but it was the, it was the, it was the, it was all the red tunics that put them off. Yeah. Needless to say. Yes. People going, you, you, you with the furry hat. <laughs> <laughs> Come here this minute and behave as if you've been at public school. <laughs> you know, and then it was the trouble. Yes. Yeah. And you, and you very much keep out of the way of England. You, you stay in Scotland as much as possible. No, no, I'm, I'm very happy here. I have a lot of friends here. Yes. Some of, of your friends, best yeah. friends are English. Some of my very yeah. best friends are English, yeah. yeah. How do you cope with this fact being so sort of famous? Because uh, Cracker gets like the biggest audiences there it are is, now. It is kind of bizarre, actually, I have to say. Uh, it made me realise what a minority interest I was before then. Because <laughs> 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 I always thought I was quite famous. Yeah. Uh, and then I suddenly sort of thought, no, I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, moderately well known, really. Into it. Because yeah. well, it's 15 and a half million in the show, and uh, yeah. so. Uh, Sainsbury's is a bit tricky, but what is interesting is because not not well, you're doing a bit obvious when you're walking along, I suppose. I mean, the, the trolley, the, the nose, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> they used to. I'm sure with a hand when I'm putting a trolley, but no, but when I when I did a lot of a lot of comedy. Mainly, you know, when I did comedy, mainly people yeah. would sort of come up and go, ah, how you doing? Give us a joke, big guy. And, yeah. and look, he's buying spaghetti. You know, everything he did was yeah. look, he's, buying, he's good. He's good spaghetti. He's doing things on Flora. And you know, and now they go, hi, and then they go like that because they think you're going to pin him to the wall. And say, you know why you said that, don't you? <laughs> and do you? Of course. Yeah, I, I sit here. Anyway, Wouldn't you? <laughs> I do. Yes. Thank you very much, Robbie Coltrane. My pleasure. Okay, well done. Thanks, Robbie. Okay, that's all. Well done. So sadly, that's all the time for tonight. You thank Salman Rushdie, Dusty Springfield, and Robbie Patrick. Thank you very much. Right, right. Learn how to talk to CV with Jack D. Eight of mine.